Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Nate and thank you for joining us today on The King of Random. A bullwhip is a staple tool of cowboys and movie action stars alike. Most bullwhips are made from kangaroo leather and are carefully braided. They can take quite a while to make and cost quite a bit of money. The purpose of today's video is to learn how to make a bullwhip yourself in a lot less time and for a way lower cost. Here's the materials we'll need to make our bullwhip. A piece of 3 quarter inch PVC, a piece of 1 inch PVC, some paracord, some BBs, athletic tape, electrical tape, and a drill bit. With all of the materials assembled, let's start by making our handle. The first step is to cut your 3 quarter inch PVC the length that you want your handle. I'm going to cut mine to be 9 inches long. We also want a 1 inch long piece of our 1 inch PVC. With the two pieces cut, press the small piece all the way onto the longer piece. Now that we have our basic handle assembled, it's time to start measuring and cutting our paracord. Our goal today is to make an 8 foot bullwhip, so we're going to take a length of paracord, run it through the handle, and measure it so that it's 8 feet in front of the handle and about 2 feet behind. About 4 feet. 4 feet. 4 feet again. We now have one length of paracord that's between 10 and 11 feet long. With the paracord, we'll now measure off nine more pieces of diminishing lengths so that our bull whip will be tapered from the handle to the thinnest part at the end of the whip. I'll use a piece of electrical tape to mark off where the bottom of the handle is on our first piece of paracord. The first piece of paracord we cut will run the entire length of the whip, and the last 18 inches of it will be what's called the fall of the whip. This is a very thin part that helps give it that distinctive crack that whips are known for. Another piece of electrical tape measures the beginning of the fall. Our second piece of paracord should run the length from the first tape mark to the second. For the remaining pieces of paracord we need to cut, let's take off 8 inches of length for each cord. For example, the second cord we cut was just over 7 feet long. We'll take that measurement and take off 8 inches from it, and that will be the size of the next piece of paracord. I now have all 10 pieces of my paracord cut out in diminishing lengths. Don't be too worried about having it be exactly 8 inches shorter every time. If you're off by an inch or two here or there, it's not really going to make a difference. Now we do need to cut 3 more pieces of paracord. Traditional bullwhips are made from leather, often kangaroo leather because it's the strongest kind. However, leather is a lot more dense and heavy than paracord, so what we need to do is add something that gives our bullwhip a lot more weight. Let's cut 3 more lengths of our paracord, matching lengths to 3 of our existing pieces. I'm going to cut one length that matches our third longest piece, then come in three pieces and match that one, and then come in three more pieces and match that one. With each of those three matching pieces of paracord that we just cut, what we want to do is pull out the internal strands from the paracord completely. The strings that were on the inside of the paracord are garbage for this project, you can throw it away. With the internal strands removed, we want to seal off one end of each of our cords. With paracord, the best way to do that is to melt them closed. Now what we're going to do with these three strands is fill them entirely with BBs. This will give some good, flexible weight to our whip. To make it easier to fit the BBs into our paracord, I'm going to use the back of this drill bit to open up the unmelted end of our paracord. You need to make sure that you're using a drill bit a little bit larger than the diameter of a BB. I'm using a 3 16 inch drill bit. Fit the shaft of the drill bit into the opening of the paracord. Now to make this permanent, we're going to melt the end of the paracord while it's on the drill bit, and then once it's cooled, we'll pull it off. With our three lengths of empty paracord fused on one end and melted open on the other end, it's time to start filling them with BBs. With the mouth of the paracord melted open, the BBs easily drop in. You then need to force the BBs, usually one at a time, from the mouth all the way back to the tail end. It can be fairly time consuming filling up all three of these strands with BBs, but have some patience and keep at it and it'll be full before you know it. With the first one done, now you fill the other two the same way. There you go, all three strands filled completely with BBs. These things have a really good weight to them, but they're still extremely flexible. Now let's just melt the ends so that the BBs can't fall out.
Gather up the ends of your 12 shorter pieces and line them up with the tape mark on the first piece that you cut. Using electrical tape, tightly secure all 13 strands of paracord together. Now, starting about 3 quarters of an inch away from the end of your handle, drill a hole using the same drill bit you used on the paracord. We now want to take the extra piece of paracord from the first piece that we cut, pass it down through the handle, and then through the hole we just drilled. You might find it helpful to melt the end of the paracord. Pull that strand tight until it pulls the rest of the cords down into the handle with it. Take the remaining end and wrap it around the bottom of your handle, as tight as you can. Run the excess cord back inside the handle and use a piece of electrical tape to hold it in place. Quick update, we have now cut several lengths of paracord to make our whip. The longest one will extend about 8 feet beyond the end of the handle, and there are 9 more pieces of diminishing lengths getting smaller and smaller to give our whip a nice taper. We then added 3 more lengths of paracord, which we took the insides out and filled them up with BBs, sealing off both ends by melting them. We've bundled all of the different strands of paracord together, taped them at the end, and fit them inside the handle. At this point, the only step left is to use our electrical tape and our athletic tape to bind the whole thing together. Let's start by securing all of the different pieces of paracord at the top of the handle. As you can see, I am not skimping out with the electrical tape. I'm making sure that there is a lot of connection between the handle and the strands of paracord. Now I'll take some electrical tape and about every foot and a half, I'll wrap tightly around all of the strands of paracord. This will help them prevent getting twisted when we apply our athletic tape. With our strands now attached to our handle, let's take the athletic tape and starting at the base of the handle, wrap it around all the way until we reach the fall of the whip. Athletic tape is great for this because it's made of cloth and it's very thin, so it's extremely flexible and it's not so sticky that when you're using the whip, the sticky bits will grip to each other and get all gummed up. It's important to try and keep your strands all pulled tight and parallel as you wrap them with tape. You don't want them to be twisting or you could have trouble using your whip later. There you have it, now that the whip is all wrapped up in the athletic tape, it is finished and ready to use. But first, Let's decorate it. Tape and rubber gloves do not really mix very well. There we have it, our whip is complete and decorated, so now let's go test it out. All right, let's try out the whip. For precaution, I am wearing a long sleeve jacket and I'll be using my glasses as well. The first thing I'm going to try is something that's called the cattleman's crack. That worked very well. That was a good crack. Let's try that again. I'm gonna face a little bit more toward the camera. Boom! That's awesome. All right, I've got another one I'm gonna try. This is called the overhead crack. That one I love. It just, that one just looks so stylish doing it, I think. I hope I look good. Maybe I look like a dork. And now I'm gonna try something. I don't know the name of this, but I kind of just discovered that it works while experimenting with a whip. And so I'm gonna try this too. I like that one. I like all of them, they're fun. For just a second, let's talk about what is happening here. When I whip the whip in those special ways, it gets a bit of a curl in it. And when that happens, it starts moving faster and faster and faster as it gets down to the end. And then this part, which is called the fall, ends up rotating in a circle so fast that it breaks the sound barrier. So the crack of a whip is actually a sonic boom when this thing goes as much as 750 miles an hour. That's amazing. It is believed that a whip is the first man-made object to ever break the sound barrier. Let's try this a couple more times. Now one thing left I wanna try is I wanna see what happens if this whip starts hitting some stuff. 
I'm gonna do some tests trying to whip a sheet of styrofoam to see what the effect is. I'm gonna start off pretty gentle to try and get a hang of aiming at the styrofoam. Okay, that hit it. It might be hard to see, but that actually put a dent in the styrofoam already. Let's try hitting a little harder. Ooh, that is a significant dent. Right there, big old line drawn right into the styrofoam. I'll see if I can really add some power and get it to crack and hit the board. Oh, that hit it. Took a chunk out of it. There you go, this styrofoam does have a protective plastic layer kind of holding it all together. And so it might be even more impressive that it's been able to mark it this much, but that took a chunk right out of the top. That's exciting. Holy cow, that one was like extra loud for some reason. That made my ears ring. Wow, and look at the mark it left. This is nuts. I'm just gonna see if I can take off a small bit of branch using the whip. Try and hit in that area. Can't aim well enough to be more precise than that. Ha, nailed it. Bullseye, snipped it clean off. There you go, that is how you can take paracord, PVC, some BBs, and a little bit of tape and make yourself a functioning bull whip. This thing is quite fun and surprisingly easy to get it to crack. It didn't take much practice before I could get it to crack every time. A special shout out to our friend Garrett who suggested and showed us how to make this kind of whip. Thank you, Garrett. Remember, if you do make this whip, always use precaution. Wear long sleeves, wear protective eye gear, and make sure there's no one else around you that you could possibly hurt or anything that you could destroy. Thanks for joining us for this project and we look forward to the next one. Talk to you then. Leaf explosion. Hey guys, I hope you're feeling happy today. I know I am because you're keeping this channel alive and well. We really appreciate your support because we could not be doing this without you. That's why you're the best.